This is WKYT News at 5.30. Good evening and thanks for watching WKYT. Today, three people pled guilty for their part in a 2014 murder. Aaron Staley, Christopher Robinson, and Lamont Wilkerson are charged in the shooting death of Amber Cottle in Clark County. Cottle was killed just two days before Christmas. WKYT's Victor Puente has more from court in our top story at 5.30. Amber Caudle was killed in December of 2014. Today, three of the people charged in her murder admitted they were responsible. All three were facing the possibility of life without parole. Amber Caudle died when a bullet fired into the apartment above hers went through the floor and hit her. Christopher Robinson, Lamont Wilkerson, and Aaron Staley said they were trying to rob the people in that apartment. Lillian Barnett is charged with driving the three men there and then driving away. Was it clear that the robbery was going to take place to everybody in the car? Yeah. In fact, you told everybody, turn that radio down, get your game face on, get serious. Is that right? Yeah. Robinson pleaded guilty to murder, burglary, and assault. Staley and Wilkinson took complicity to each of those charges. The Commonwealth recommended sentences ranging from 25 to 30 years. Barnett, who has yet to go to trial, was in the courtroom. Commonwealth's attorneys asked each of the men about her involvement. Was Lillian Barnett standing there watching you with your assault rifle, Mr. Staley with his revolver, and both of you putting your, everybody putting their gloves on? Yes. So she observed all of that. Lillian Barnett will be back in court January 5th of 2017 for a status hearing in her case. In Clark County, Victor Puente, WKYT. All three men will be back in court for their final sentencing on November 3rd. Three people charged in the murder of a Kentucky National Guardsman are appeared in court this morning. Jeremy Harris, Christy Hanley, and Justin Sloan are charged in connection to the murder of Trevor Dilger. Dilger's body was found over Labor Day weekend in a burning car near the Fayette-Woodford County line. There was no testimony given today, and all three of the cases are being waived on to the grand jury. Fall officially begins today, but here in the bluegrass, summer looks to be sticking around just a little bit longer. Let's check in now with WKYT's Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey and an early look at still a warm forecast. Yeah, very toasty forecast, Sam, that carries us uh, through the rest of our Thursday and right on into the coming weekend. Live look at nine cams across central and eastern Kentucky, all nine of those showing a very similar view. You've got the blue skies over top of us. You have absolutely no humidity to talk about and the thermometers that are toasting it up a little bit into the upper 80s to around 90 into parts of central and northern Kentucky, mid to upper 80s, southeastern Kentucky. You've been uh, kind of getting through this with much cooler air compared to your neighbors to the west and north. It's only 84 right now in a downtown Harlan. If you're out this evening, you know the drill. 80-ish before sundown and a drop into the mid and upper 60s by 11 o'clock. It's still going to feel fairly nice out there just because you don't have any humidity to play with. Defender radar network, uh, nothing showing up. I got nothing for you through the weekend. Fall starts out a whole lot like summer. A little sizzle for that weekend forecast, but if you are looking for a change, and I imagine many of you are, even maybe some of the uh, biggest fans of summer probably want to get a little more fall air in here. Hang tough and wait until you see the seven-day forecast. We will unload a little blast of fall coming up here in less than 10 minutes. Chris, thank you. The owner of a central Kentucky orchard says it is business as usual today despite a huge fire there overnight. The fire destroyed two barns at Boyd Orchards in Woodford County last night. This is Sky First video of the aftermath. Our Michelle Chamberlain talked with the owner of Boyd Orchards in a story that's new at 5 30. Terry Boyd is working nonstop to get his orchard back to normal following two barn fires. We're fatigued this time of year anyway because we're so busy. And then you put this little incident on top of that, and it's, it's a little hump to get over. Now, behind me is the main market for Boyd Orchards. If you look above that market, that's not a cloud you're looking at, that's smoke coming from the playground. Boyd says an ember from the barn fires flew 200 yards, somehow landing in the middle of a 100 plus haystack pyramid. That sits right in the middle of the playground. We had fire trucks there, and they were putting water on the top of that straw, but it, all, it was too late. It, it, that ember had gotten down in between those bales somehow, and those cracks weren't more than like an inch or so wide. And uh, just bad luck. It was just bad luck. Boyd says the good news is the tools lost in the barn fires won't affect his fall business. He had to cancel some field trips for this week and will keep the playground closed until the weekend. 
But starting Saturday, business will go on as usual. If we would have lost this market, well, that would have been lights out for us. And uh, the market's perfect. I mean, it has zero effect. And, uh, and yes, it could have been much worse for us. In Woodford County, Michelle Chamberlain, WKYT. So the owner wants to make it clear, Boyd Orchard's Cider Day Festival is scheduled to go on as planned. It starts this Saturday. Our county by county coverage today begins in Spencer County. The sheriff there says he can't get any help dealing with what he says is a mold infestation in his office. Sheriff Buddy Stump says the mold was discovered inside his offices back in July. The agency conducting the test said filtering devices would be sufficient until a more permanent solution could be reached. Some says it was a band aid at best. Basically, all that's been done to correct the situation is a case of Clorox wipes, two air scrubbers, and a dehumidifier. On Monday, the Spencer County Fiscal Court voted 3 to 3 to move the offices into the county's EMS building. A special meeting has been scheduled for tomorrow to work out a solution. A California based company is bringing hundreds of jobs to Western Kentucky. Alorica says they plan to hire 840 new employees for their new customer service center in Owensboro. A spokesperson for the company says 90% of the new jobs will be full time, with the first 500 hires expected in the first year. The center is expected to open in downtown Owensboro sometime next summer. Bluebell is again recalling two flavors of its ice cream over listeria concerns. The Texas based ice cream maker is recalling some Bluebell chocolate chip cookie dough and Bluebell cookie two step. Bluebell says it found out that chocolate chip cookie dough from an Iowa company was potentially contaminated. The ice cream was distributed in nearly a dozen states, including Kentucky. The Kentucky Horse Park has taken the first step in trying to host the 2022 World Equestrian Games. According to our news partners at the Herald Leader, the park has submitted a letter expressing formal interest. They will learn in December if they've made the short list of official candidates before they begin making formal plans for their bid process. The park hosted the games back in 2010. A long abandoned site could soon be home to a $50 million project. That story in just under six minutes here on WKYT. I'm Bill Bryant. A Lexington councilman suddenly resigns. The Kentucky Supreme Court sets a limit on the governor's power, and the presidential candidates prepare for Monday's debate. The bottom line is ahead. The presidential candidates are preparing for their first debate next week. Bill Bryant has the details in the bottom line. Good evening. It has been a day of major local and state political developments in Lexington. City Councilman Russ Hensley resigned effective immediately and withdrew from the November 8th election. Mayor Jim Gray had appointed Hensley to replace longtime Councilman Ed Lane, who died late last year while serving the city's 12th council district. But today, in a letter to Gray, Hensley said the death of his business partner, Sam Elam Jr., has caused Hensley to have to devote more time and attention to his business. Business. Hensley's withdrawal leaves just one candidate on the ballot for the election, former nonprofit executive Kathy Plowman. Today's Kentucky Supreme Court ruling on university budget cuts sets limits on Republican Governor Matt Bevin's ability to reallocate state spending enacted by the legislature. It's one of several suits brought on by Democratic Attorney General Andy Bashir testing the governor's power. Today, Bashir said his motive was not political. He called it a victory for the state constitution. Bevin says he made those cuts and others to address a severely underfunded state retirement system that has been called one of the shakiest in the country. Bevin called the ruling a disappointment and said Bashir doesn't understand the pension problem. Just four days until Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump will be face to face on the same stage and before what is expected to be a huge TV audience. Donald Trump told Fox News today that moderator Lester Holt should let the candidates argue it out and not try to fact check the candidates. Clinton is taking some days off of the campaign trail now to prepare for Monday night's event at Hofstra University in New York. The former Secretary of State says she's doing her homework ahead of the debates. And longtime Lexington prosecutor Ray Larson's replacement was named today. Governor Bevan appointed Lou Anna Redcorn as Fayette Commonwealth's attorney. She is an assistant prosecutor to Larson, who is retiring at the end of the month. Bill Bryant, WKYT.
Bill, thank you. You don't have to live in Kentucky long to know that we can have some really thick fog settling at night and early morning hours, and that can make dangerous driving conditions. Ed has our good question tonight as Chris jumps in here. Chris, here's the question. Uh -huh. Recently, we've had some nights and mornings with a heavy fog. Right. Several times, Chris Bailey will report that visibility is reduced to three, mm -hmm. four, maybe five miles. It seems to me, this is from the viewer, that right. visibility of three miles is great. When I can't see the end of my driveway 600 feet away, mm -hmm. then I would say visibility is reduced. And how is visibility calculated? Now, earlier this week, we had a tragic crash on DeLong Road, right. motorcycle crash, mm -hmm. person was killed. And they think that thick fog sure. was the result of uh, or contributed to that deadly accident. You know, one thing to keep in mind about fog, A, it's not uniform. So you right. can have very dense fog in one area and then go down the road and all of a sudden visibility improves a little bit, then it gets thicker. As a question of how it is, uh, how do we get the visibility here? Well, I've got a map here to show you. And the visibilities across Kentucky, Sam, are based on what the airports are seeing. It's not any one location. It's not any one particular roadway or backyard. And here you can see the hour by hour fog forecast for tomorrow morning. Notice the lowest visibility on there, Sam, is 1.9 miles. That is in uh, southeastern Kentucky in Prestonsburg. That is forecasting for 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. And again, it is a center that is uh, out at these airports that, in a lot of cases, will have an infrared. Uh, light that is scattering through there, and it's basing the visibility on just how clear the air is from point A to point B. Now, a lot of times, those statements that are sent out in terms of visibility can be augmented a little bit by an airport or a traffic control air traffic controller who are trained weather observers as well. So they know they can see the end of a runway and say, "Okay, I know that end of the runway is one mile away from me." But I can't see that now. So they're going to augment that report and update it to say, "Okay, visibility is now under." A mile or 0.7 miles. But you got to keep in mind on fog that it is not uniform and you can get reduced visibilities in one spot and then go down the road and all of a sudden you're in the clear right. a little bit. So if you say there's thick fog out there, uh, yeah. people should at least be aware it could be a problem. Exactly right. And that's you're just giving a warning. That we're giving a heads up. We're not saying it's going to be this at where you live, we're giving a okay. rough estimate based on a computer model there. And also something that is interesting to folks out there, sure. you hear me say zero visibility. Right. Technically zero visibility you would think would mean I can't see right in front sure. of my face, right? Mm -hmm. It actually means that you can see up to 330 feet. A that football is, field. That a football field that is okay. still considered zero visibility in the world of weather. All right. Good question from our viewer there and good answer from Chris Thanks, Bailey. Sir. To submit a good question, send an email to goodquestion at WKYT.com. A long abandoned site could soon be home to a $50 million project. A 135 acre industrial park called the Erlanger Commerce Center is being planned on the site of the old Showcase Cinemas in Kenton County. The site has been abandoned since 2008. The new project will likely be built in two or three phases and take three to five years to build out. Just doing rough calculations last night, we figured that that would increase our revenue by about a million dollars a year for the city. That means a lot. Both the city and the developer acknowledge that the road leading to the site will have to be improved to handle any new traffic. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Well, we continue to deal with a lot of summertime across the Bluegrass State. I know it's early fall. Fall is, what, uh, just a few hours old? Yeah, Mother Nature and fall not going hand-in-hand -hand right now. They're not agreeing, so... It's going to keep it summertime for a little while longer. Jackson Cam, southeastern Kentucky. Check out this absolutely gorgeous shot. And I actually see a little cloud cover showing up there in the distance. Can't find that on our WKYT sky cam. And we're looking toward the south right now. And that blue sky that continues to be noted across most of central and eastern Kentucky. Temperatures 85 to 90 as expected today. We're going to be back in that same ballpark again tomorrow. And again into Saturday. So it is a rubber stamp forecast. So we just kind of send it on down the line for the next couple of days. And then next week we do see some changes on the way. Defender Radar Network, if you're worried about precipitation right now, forget about it. Not happening anytime soon. Some of you are worried about it because your lawn needs a little drink, huh? Hang in there. We got at least chances early next week. Let's roll into the three day forecast tomorrow. Morning fog, 90. Saturday, still feels like summer. Close to 90 degrees in many areas. Another very warm day on Sunday. Winds are going to pick up. Maybe see a little cloud cover out there. Commonwealth Stadium on Saturday. Gamecocks coming to town. 90 tailgaters. Sunscreen. You'll thank me later. If not, we're going to be a little red 
Well, we're watching some of those games. 79 degrees uh, by halftime, or kickoff, I should say, upper 70s, low 80s, halftime and beyond. We drop it through the 70s toward the upper 60s and low 70s. Next week, it's all about the jet stream. Got to get the jet stream to take a big dip. We have been in the red for a while now. That's on the hot side of the jet. So that's the river of air that pushes the weather along. When you get on the northern side of that, chances are you're going to get some cooler weather. That is indeed the case in the next week. We also may get at least some scattered showers and thunderstorms later Monday and into Tuesday. Upper level low is going to try to spin across the area. That can give us a prolonged stretch of some cooler than normal weather. Now, is this actually going to play out ex like we're showing here? Well, you're still four or five days away, and the models are going to struggle with exactly the timing and the placement of that. But odds next week favor much cooler air across most of the eastern half of the country, including right here in the good old bluegrass state. I hear the collective cheer going up out there. 90 tomorrow and into Saturday. 86 on Sunday, chance for a shower or thunderstorm as early as Monday afternoon with a cold front due into town as we make our way into Tuesday. There's at least a chance for a shower into the middle of next week, guys. More at least confident in the thermometers coming down than the rain chances on Wednesday and Thursday. Those thermometers coming down is good, but we're going to need some rain by then, too. Yeah, so. we are. We've been a little dry for a while now, and you know, typically September is very dry around here. That's the case this it year. Is. Chris, thanks. All right. They just checked the construction zone on Todd's Road, and we're okay there. Had a stalled car just uh, earlier past Man of War, but it's been cleared, and it looks like Purcell's Road still looks good through the construction zone as well. Uh, Nicholas still Road, one of our hot spots from Southland Drive to the Circle, as well as Richmond Road approaching the Circle. Drive times right now, uh, and we're okay in the Paris. No major delays in the Clark County on 64. Now back to you in the studio. He was mad. Mark Stoops didn't hold back after Wednesday's practice, Rob. He used some strong words yesterday, like his players need to grow up. We'll hear from Mark Stoops and the four Wildcats who broke the color barrier in the SEC will be remembered forever with a statue. The unveiling is tonight. That's next in sports. Back in the mid-1960s, four men made history. The first four African Americans to play football at the University of Kentucky and in integrating the Southeastern Conference. A permanent memorial is unveiled tonight. Brian Milam is out at Commonwealth Stadium. Thank you very much, Rob. Here in about an hour outside of Gate 12 at Commonwealth Stadium, we will have a ceremony, a statue revealing ceremony as Nate Northington, the late Greg Page, Wilbur Hackett, and Houston Hogg, four men mightily important to not just athletics, but to the history of UK and the history of the Southeastern Conference. Page and Northington signed to play at UK for coach Charlie Bradshaw in 1966 with the promise other black players would be recruited. Houston Hogg and Wilbur Hackett followed the next year. Now tonight's ceremony means a lot to the players of today because the honorees paved the way. It's very important, um, you know, because, uh, you know, breaking the color barrier and, and the SEC and things like that, uh, it's, that's phenomenal, I think. And um, what they're doing with that statue is, is great uh, to commemorate them. And i um, happy to uh, do that for those guys. And, um, you know, with a lot of things going on in the world right now, it's, it's, really a, it's really a good thing to see stuff like that. So some 50 years after history was made, we revisit the past and honor those who paved the way to integrate UK athletics and the SEC. Reporting from Commonwealth Stadium, I'm Brian Milam, WKYT. Thank you, Brian. Mark Stoops didn't mince words yesterday when he said he was disappointed with his team's practice. Stoops said he wasn't very pleased with the defense. He said his players aren't tough enough and aren't and are immature. Stoops called his team frustrated. Some guys need to grow up in a hurry. We have no idea what it takes to have concentration from the beginning of the week through the end and through a whole game and so on. You get the picture. We're, 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 we're not real uh, tough. We're not real smart. And uh, we've got a lot of a long way to go. All right, South Carolina up next to Commonwealth Stadium, 730 kickoff on the SEC Network on Saturday night. And the Times and television networks for the five remaining UK home basketball games are now finalized. Friday, November 11, 
Stephen F. Austin starts at 7. The Duquesne game on Sunday, November 20th, will be a 9 o'clock start. On November 23rd, day before Thanksgiving, Cleveland State will tip at 1 in the afternoon. UT Martin on Friday the 25th, 7 o'clock. Valparaiso, December 7th. That will be a Wednesday night. That's an 8 o'clock start. All but one of the games is on the SEC Network. Much more coming up in the next half hour. What is wrong with that Kentucky defense? Stay with us. We're back after the break.